Hey, everybody. Welcome to Habitat Now. I'm your host, Aaron Shea, and it's a truly an honor to have you join me as our, I guess our summer is coming to an end, huh? It's crazy how time is flying, and now we're getting back into the season of glass. And we're celebrating here today with Michael Behrens, artist Michael Behrens, who's joined us from Germany to talk about his museum show in Frauenau, which is really exciting, and it's coming, I think it's ending next month, right, Michael, in November? Uh, November the 5th uh, ending. That's great. So if you have a chance to go to go and see it, I highly recommend it. If not, we'll preview some of it today. And it's really a really an, an impressive exhibition Michael's put together. And it's honored to have you join me today. So I'm going to take over your screen real quick and uh, run through a little bit of uh, what's going on at the gallery. We have some amazing things planned. We, have some, we obviously announced our Glass Coast Weekend, so I'll get into that. Let me start sharing my screen and you can see what's going on. So uh, we do these Zooms every Saturday. We have some exciting things come up coming up. We had a great talk last week with artist Pearl Dick talking about a year in her life for NGG. It was really interesting learning about how she gives back to her community and how she travels and teaches. And she's such a powerful force and we're honored to have her in our family. So check that one out. And again, we continue doing these in the future. So we have our dates picked out for Sarasota for our Glass Coast weekend. We're working with, we're trying to work with the Imagine Museum. We're working with the uh, Ringling Co College of Art and Design. We're working with the Sarasota Art Museum, working with the, the Ringley Museum. There's lots of stuff going on down there. It's going to be so great to get and see everybody down in Florida. So be there, or I guess be square. We have an exhibition. We have two, technically, but one is not really an exhibition. Uh, we're going to be at the Birmingham Art Fair this year, believe it or not. We're trying to, trying to spread the word for Habitat locally. And so if you happen to be near Birmingham on the 23rd of September, come and see us. We'll have a tent. I think we're just bringing the big dog. Uh, by Mar by Marta Klanowska, just to expose people to the arts. And, and we should have been doing the show years ago, to be honest. It's like 90,000 people coming to see it, so why not get glass in front of them? That night, though, we're doing the opening for Zora Polova and Stefan Pala, their Synergy show, which is being set up now. These two are incredibly talented artists working on the best work of their career, pushing the medium through the pandemic and beyond, just creating large, uh, massive, and modest-sized sculptures, but there's nothing like it. And they're students of Lubinsky. You have to come see it. All right, without further ado, our guest of honor, Michael Barron, is here today to talk about his exhibition titled Earth that is at the Fraunau Glass Museum. And I want to say, Michael, join us and say hello. Hello, Aaron. Thank you very much for having me so far. <laughs> it's nice to see everybody again. Yes, as much as we can in this in this, this digital age. And then uh, and uh, hopefully we'll get to, get to see you maybe in Florida. What do you say? Yes. Well, for this time of the year, nice weather. In Germany, it's cold, cold and stormy, maybe some snow. It would be nice to be in Florida again. Yeah, I agree. So um, let's get into your presentation. I'll share my Wait, screen again. Yeah. Quick ahead. question, because yeah. I, I've seen one image. Was this the first one? Or mm -hmm. do you have the possibility to add the film I sent it? Oh, you sent me a film? Yes, I sent you a film. Oh, let me find it real quick and I'll get it up. Oh, oh just, just, just maybe you also can take uh, like the per, a, a picture from the film, the first one. That would, would be great. So oh, uh, I, don't, I don't seem to have the link from you from the film. I so guess. you you just were able to see some models and some uh, stands made out of play wood. Hmm. Let me show you what I got. <laughs> I don't think I have that. I have it goes right into the setups for the show real quick. This is what I have. Is there a video somewhere you can send me and I can open it? Uh, okay, no. So we will start another way. Um, okay. So we'll talk about we. how did this exhibition come together? I guess it's a great uh, So question. like, uh, how does this exhibition uh, come together? About like three or four years ago, we traveled to the south of Bavaria and I met the curator at uh, Fraunau. Just as uh, stops the images over there. And I make a suggestion for, uh, about that we could make a show like a retrospective show of the past uh, 20 years. And I showed her some images. And so far she didn't know about the size of my work. Because <laughs> when you see it on, uh, on, 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 on just on images, so some of the work is like uh, five feet, four feet tall. So she agreed that we were making a big show this year. This is how it comes together. And yeah. they and you guys produced this beautiful catalog we'll be going through, too, which is yes, really exciting. Um, this is a work uh, in the catalog and at the museum from uh, the past 20 years. And mm -hmm. we put over 40 objects together. 
and yeah. the museum owns a ha, owns a piece or two too of your collection yes uh it's also included uh in the catalog they own an amber piece uh, about three feet tall yes they okay, purchased, yeah. the purchased the object like one or two years ago just shortly before uh the show yeah gotcha great so, this so right was... here you you see the uh like uh pieces from 20 years new pieces old pieces six pellets and it was like uh, five thousand pounds going to flower now it's like about 800 miles or uh, 500 or 500 miles driveway like here you can see this is the main exhibition hall it's the museum in frau now we have lots of natural light and we have about 400 square feet you can see the lining out up of all the crates and the pellets and we had about five days for the setup for the setup of the show yeah. five days huh that's a good amount yeah yeah us. five days and um yeah here you can see this is a museum in frown now uh it was founded um i think uh 1975 by erwin eich at this point, it was related to the city of Fraunau, but uh, it's a public museum since about 10 years, since 2014. It's one of the biggest uh, glass museums in the south of uh, Germany, in Bavaria. And in the front, you can see uh, my van. I was living uh, close to museum in my van, <laughs> uh, in, my, in my camper van. Uh, where I traveled uh, last year about uh, six months in the van all to Europe. How yeah. far is this museum from your studio? From my studio, it's a kind of, <laughs> of course, depending on traffic mm -hmm. in Germany, every, everything you have lots of queuing up, it's between six, uh, six and eight hours drive. So I would guess about seven, eight hours drive. Yeah. Wow. Gotcha. So it's a big drive. Yeah, like uh, Germany is, is not as big as the States, but it's, uh, yeah. yeah. Here you can see, like, because um, <clears throat> this is one of the uh, landscapes panels just uh, shortly before we put it on the walls. And in the background, you can see the uh, pedestals we created. Already I wanted to show you the movie, but we had, don't have it right now. We'll get but, it. Uh, as, no, but especially for the show, because there were like over 40 objects, we make uh, installation, like we have seven different groups and we created, or we, I created together with the museum, we create the, um, the stands, especially for this show. These were brand new made from me in my studio, especially for the museum. And for each object and the models, we first we make a, a first setup with the models in my studio to show how it's working together. Now here you can see, you see a little bit, you see this is a kind of 50% uh, of the room. And on the pedestals, you can see, yeah, you can see a little bit the images from the pieces. And uh, now you see nearly like 50% of, uh, of the room, but without the objects, first we make the setup of the pedestals and we have to, to screw and to, to put everything together. And this takes us at least like two days just mm. on the pedestals. Wow. And that takes up time. Yeah. So three days later, nearly finished. <laughs> It's like, uh, like uh, yeah, when Habitat is putting up the show, you can see because uh, the pieces are mainly, I put it pieces together from, yeah, like from all over the world. Some came from Habitat and uh, some came out of Europe. Uh, yeah, Aaron, uh, you can see some pieces which are familiar to you, mm -hmm. like the, the blue, blue one on the left-hand side. Um, yep. So uh, it's made, the show is... Uh, like 50% based on like a big film casted work. Yeah. It's an impressive collection of your work. It's amazing. Very retrospective. Yes, um, You're able to hit so many different bodies we'll talk about. Yes. Now here you can, um, one question, you put all images together. Now these are the images from the show. We make the catalog afterwards. Or yep. we... we're going to do the show and then the catalog. Okay. Like, uh, 
here you can see uh, these are all bodies of work over the past 20 years. I created five bodies of work uh, afterwards when we uh, browse through the catalog. I will talk more about it. Here on the left and the right hand side, you can see the landscapes, the wall panels. And now we can dive a little bit into the groups of uh, the pieces. Yeah, these are the landscapes wall panels mounted on the wall. And these, these uh, photos don't do these pieces justice. They have such an amazing sparkle to them and coloring. Yeah. We'll look at it in the photos. Because uh, right now also all images you see are just uh, because time like usual was very tight. So I just, at the end of the setup, I make a few images with my, uh, mainly done with the phone and then uh, Back to Germany, mm -hmm. back to Germany, uh, back to Germany, back to home because <laughs> an unusual show for me because it was the first really big retrospective show in Germany in a public museum. Yeah. Well, this is an early so, body of your work. We'll see. Yeah, more, this right? is a this is an early body of work. Afterwards, also we really will see some uh, about uh, pieces in the catalog. But here you can see the. It's really good to see the movement and the bending of the pieces because these are from the underwater world. And these pieces are two times in the kiln, like one for bending and the second time for melting. Uh, first for melting, <laughs> then for bending, I'll switch it up. And mainly all pieces you see are uh, uh, purchased from some museums, like from the Ernsting from for Foundation and from the uh, Museum Kunstpalast uh, in Germany. Yeah. Well, the detailed shot of the space. Yes. It's uh, interesting to see this body of work. You can see the beautiful veils and the, and the coloring. Yeah, these uh, pieces were, were developed like uh, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And the pieces are like uh, around... 15, 16 years old. Mainly the pieces are from, from 2008 and uh, created uh, at the uh, shop company. Have, so at have, this time, if you uh, stop like um, I created at the shop company, I got several uh, artists or residences over five years. Hmm. And each year I stayed at the company about for two or three months several days a week, create something in the kiln. A few day, a few weeks afterwards, uh, the kiln was in yield. So when I was focusing on the inner and structure, let's suppose. So we'll, we'll talk more about the uh, bodies of work when we get to the catalog. Oh, okay. Because okay. I, I suspect you'll, you'll have a lot to say in what the, the visuals are yeah. there. What, so the because idea of grouping the, the sea forms together with color. So one one idea of grouping the uh, sea forms was, I steal it from Habertat, if <laughs> I'll be honest. No, I really like the idea to put, like the, the curator and director of the museum, they were a little bit confused. They're not confused. I had to convince them because they want to give space to each piece. Mm -hmm. And I said, it, no, what do you think about the idea if you make it in a different way to put it together by shape and color to create like several groups because also my work is very colorful to, to, to separate it a little bit from each other. So mm -hmm. I created uh, seven groups by the theme, like we have the sea forms, the landscapes, underwater world uh, together. And if you browse the images a little bit, if you go to the next, my favorite group, most favorite group is the, the red one. Mm -hmm. But depending on the group, like this is a place by also here, you see there's one evolution piece in, in it, but mainly um, these are the sea forms. Beautiful yeah. works. Absolutely stunning, Michael. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And of course, working with the with the gallery all over the years. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you were asking after the flower now piece. This is the right the one in the middle, mm -hmm. and actually, this is piece number one from the C form series mm. in two thousand eleven. And you had you had actually uh, in this year you had two pieces pieces at the international. Mm -hmm. One you sold, 
It's uh, at the collector's house in Chicago. Uh, I think in the in the in the, in the, in the 50s uh, floor or 52nd floor. <laughs> you also know the collector. And the other one after years came back and the museum purchased it. Uh -huh. Another beautiful collection right here. Yeah, yeah, I was see. Yeah. It reminds and me of what you talk about when you're underwater. Like about to to I want to make an installation of the object. So you have these groups and you have this movement of the pieces and you have the the color. And while you are walking the show, you have another kind of yeah uh, view. This like uh, if all pieces are together, you have another kind of view and you see a kind of movement in the pieces, but also movement and reflection in the group i, I can say. i can see that the why this is your favorite in front of the natural light the pieces yeah. really look impressive especially the larger ones yeah all the ones are such stunning works just for the uh like people which are looking or afterwards for recording like the the small pieces they're around like two and a half feet mm -hmm. and the big ones are up to uh, I have to think in feet about four feet. Is this right, Aaron? Yeah. What's like, great like about 50 inch, 50 right. inch, uh, yeah, 50 or maybe inches. 55 55, inch. Yeah. What's am, I, about, am I right with the sizes? You yeah. are. What's great about this too is con a lot of these works are available for purchase. The museum is exhibiting them, adding to the provenance of these pieces, but we have a price list of the works available through Habitat. So everything that isn't owned by the museum is available for purchase after the museum exhibition is open over. So contact me. Should you see anything you like or want other photos? I'll be happy to send Michael nine hours or seven hours to the museum to get photos for you. <laughs> or we'll wait. But absolutely no, like, incredible. Um, like, uh, because for me, I put it, uh, you see a lot of big pieces. And this takes a lot of time. The kneeling, grinding, and polishing. And this is the reason I put the pieces from 20 years together. For instance, also the the red uh, the red and orange piece on the right hand side right now. This is also from a foundation. So I had the, I had the possibility from four museums in Germany. I can track or the museum track the pieces together. So they are borrowed from other museums. Like we have the Kunstpalast in Düsseldorf. We have the Ernsting Foundation in Coesfeld. They have a very big uh, collection of my work. And the Achilles Foundation in Hamburg, they also have uh, like several big pieces over the year. It's great. And okay. actually, this piece was also at Habitat, I think so. Am yep. I right? You were the one Like in this the piece travels the world. It was at Habitat, it was at Florida. This has been in um, in Venice at the very great show at the Homer Faber show at the Michelangelo Foundation. And shortly afterwards, the Achilles Foundation purchased it. So I'm really happy that this one found a new home. That's great. I put them, I put that piece next to it on my desktop. I thought it was absolutely stunning too. The, the, uh, the, the, I guess it's the L or J shaped piece to the left of the big one. Just, just yeah. in, every piece is just magical when you see it in person. Well, this uh, is here because great. this image is not that nice because mm -hmm. I just got this from the museum Instagram account. But I think here, Yuli, really, you can see uh, the dark, the left hand side. And now, really, it was a nice and sunny day. You can see uh, there's just a little bit artificial light, but it really likes the colors really popping up if you see the natural light from the back. It's a beautiful exhibition, Michael. So let's kick over to the the PDF, right, of the show. So we can kind of yes, get an idea okay. of the different bodies of work that are on display. So first I was a little bit confused. I, I thought the images of the show would come after the PDF, <laughs> but now we make it the other way around. Yep. So Sorry I'm again, I'm, I'm really happy that we created a, a full color book of all pieces which are in the show. I can... Shall I show it to you in the in the camera? Aaron? Yeah, if I you can, just I can get stop, back. Let me stop sharing and I'll pin you up for everybody to see. Go ahead and spotlight you. No, no, no just this is a full color catalog. Um, it's about uh, <clears throat> one hundred and twelve pages. Like this is the front, and if we turn it around, this is the back. 
So we make an image of the pieces <laughs> from the front and when you flip it from the back. So it's, it's, a, it's a really nice catalog. Aaron has this one, has several of the catalogs in the gallery. Mm -hmm. So if it's like the printed version, if somebody is interested, um, they can drop you a line or I can send you new ones. Yeah, that would be great. So we're at the first body of work, which you kind of covered. So I'll kind of clip through this a little bit, the underwater older series. And these are the exact pieces that are on display in the museum, right? Yes, these are, um, uh, these are from the underwater world series. Like first, uh, now we are talking about uh, the five, uh, just uh, go back, Aaron. Sure. If we go one image back that I can, uh, yes, that, uh, stop at one point at this one so um <clears throat> this was the uh, first series of five i started with this one in uh, around 20 years ago 2003 mainly it's kiln casted work like the panels i will talk about later this is a little bit fused a little bit kiln casted so um at this point i was working with less color and I was concentra concentrating uh, how do I get the inherent structure in the pieces. So this was a kind of yeah, try and error. But also I got a great scholarship from the Schott Company. So it's, and in Germany, they are kind of famous, founded a, a big glass producer also worldwide, um, founded in the 18th century. Mm. And they are around uh, three hours drive away <clears throat> from my hometown. By um, at this point, my mother was living close to it, so I stayed at her house and I can work in the factory. And we really figured out about the kneeling and about uh, to get the color, the colors into the solid glass pieces. Yeah. Hmm. I pick to the next page of this thing. Yeah. Let people see. The other pictures i like yeah. this this piece is very nice so like um the images we have seen before of course these are made nicely in the photoshop but uh, when you have seen the uh, pieces from the show in the museum uh, you could see the pieces from different angles and you really see the the movement from the shape mm -hmm. also, like this piece is also like it's four feet wide and uh <clears throat> like uh, four inch thick and mainly the pieces are a kind of heavy of course yeah they look they look like they're yeah. very solid pieces let's get yeah. to number uh the next body of work which is the underwater right yes yes which, which is uh, which is underwater you are right so um uh, a few years later um i decided to uh, make something new something more expressive so uh, I figured out how do I get my patterns into the pieces. And uh, now I really, I really start uh, sculpting the work. I'm working like a sculpture, so of course with the model. I shape the model and then I make the molds. And if you if you browse through the next pictures, the next images of the blue group, you really can see the um, the pieces. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can see that I'm uh, like. Uh, Playing with uh, this is keeps this Aaron. This is a good example. You have polished surfaces, and on the right hand side, you have also structured surfaces. So it's a kind of my interpretation of the also of my yeah of my source of inspiration, and also of the technique, like uh, the technique uh, like the kiln casted work. Uh, is for me based in the Czech Republic in combination with a kind of Italian technique, the uh, Batuto, you can see on the right hand side on the surface on the objects. Yes, we can go one. to the next one. So it's a combination from like uh, optical glass with like a patever overlay and I keep the structures in the pieces and uh, to um, <clears throat> let the movement also to a uh, source of inspiration like uh, 
on the main body of work is the underwater world. And I want to, if you go one step back, I want to show the, the, the movement in the inner end of the object. Okay. Beautiful stuff. All right, we're kicking over to landscape. Boom. Landscapes. Bam. Next body of work. Oh, I just no, lost it entirely. Is... Yeah, no, no, you are. We are really at the end. Uh, <laughs> yeah, give me a second to go back. If the I have landscape seen that set up. just disappeared. Um, <laughs> here we go. So here 26. we go. So, um, so I think if you don't know that this is my body of work, you could also could think, oh, this is from a totally different artist. So um, the uh, the landscapes also inspired by nature, but uh, this is a kind of water, which is uh, like uh, landscapes. <laughs> Again, <laughs> <laughs> the shaping of the landscapes is done mainly by water, and I'm mm. working in uh, combination with uh, with Google Earth. So it's uh, seasides and rivers, and I'm working with Google Earth and putting these images. For instance, this is an Australian salt, uh, salt lake, and if you go back to the first turkeys one, like uh, so, maybe uh, somebody knows this. This is the uh, these are the Everglades in mm. Florida. On the bottom, it's going to the Gulf of Mexico, and if you're going to the to, to the north more, you really dive into the the Everglades. They're beautiful. They're very peaceful pieces. Give you a sense of relaxation and the feeling of being serene. And uh, <clears throat> also at the installation pick, you could see they are really like mounted uh, with brackets on the wall, and you have a little bit of the imagination that they are floating. A few mm -hmm. inch away from the wall. Beautiful. How do you get that? Um, is it they're silvered, right? How do you get the? Yes. Um, um, this time I try to speak not too much about the works. Maybe yeah. afterwards there coming some <laughs> questions. Sure. So the the uh, the optical glass is mated partially over a pattern, and after uh, cooling down. The back of the plate is silvered mm -hmm. and covered with a kind of vanish. Uh, and from the front, it's sandblasted. So there you have the combination from a kind of velvet surface and sandblasted surface. And I'm working with, uh, with pigments to, to, to color the um, sandblasted surface. <clears throat> I love this body of work. It's very, very so you also have uh, you have the imagination of you have different surfaces, and here it's a little bit difficult to see all pieces. They are like uh, three quarters of an inch thick, half inch, three quarters of an mm -hmm. inch, and you can really dive into the surface. Yeah. All so right, now we're going uh, to Phoenix, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, my, my numbers are all messed up. So let me get to Phoenix. There we go. <laughs> all right, I am here. So the Phoenix, Phoenix, is, is the Phoenix pieces uh, I started in uh, 2019. Uh, I try to concentrate on the shape. So no, I try to I concentrate on the shape. This is a very good example. It's actually, it's some people think it's marble, but this is really black, opaque crystal totally black and uh, depending where the light comes through you can see it on the right hand side you have this nice reflections and uh, incorporate some 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 gold on the structures so we have a really strong uh, contrast of the pieces there yeah, here you can see it mm -hmm. and of course um one reason was uh what makes me uh, to create these pieces, I got a big fire in my studio about uh, 10 years ago. The whole studio burned down, burned down in one night. And this also uh, gives me, after years, takes a little bit, gives me a push to make the pieces. Very different, very beautiful. All right, we're going to evolution now, right? Hopefully I have the right yeah. number. <clears throat> 
And I do. All right, forty-seven. We have one. Yes, this is the also. This is the uh, this is a cover from the catalog. Uh, uh, I just kind of started with the new series of the evolution, so I want to get more. These are more related to the seed forms. Uh, and uh, you can see it a little bit, but now I started with the ring form and uh, these are getting more expressive. So I'm really, I'm really shaping. So I'm really shaping my, you can go back. So mm -hmm. There's just one piece from the, this is one of the first pieces of the evolution that just uh, was finished a little bit shortly before the show. And I really keep this piece, uh, this piece for the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, could you please go one image back? It's better, you can see the piece, yeah. And now I'm working on a bigger body of work of the evolution pieces for the next years. You will have also the kind of the ring shape with the, with the inherent structure, uh, kind of structure I'm known for, but the, the new evolution pieces will get a little bit more, I would say like condensed and then and silent. Hmm. This body of work is so different from C forms, but it's also very similar. Yeah, in the style, and so I'm yeah. looking forward to seeing. And where from this the goes. Um, yeah, I, try, I always like after a few years. But uh, you mentioned the C forms anyway. Like the C forms is my biggest. The C form series are my biggest body of work over all the years. Uh, we are working together and I'm working with museums and other, ga ga other galleries. Uh, I think I have made several hundred pieces of the sea forms. Mm. Sometimes I get questions yeah, or over like the, the, the past uh, 11 or 12 years. Sometimes I get questions, how many pieces are you making here? Also for the sea forms pieces, I just make around 30 or 35 pieces a year. Ah. In general, not more. It's uh, with the kiln, kiln casted work, it's not possible to make several hundred pieces a year. Expect right. I would work with uh, 30 employees and I don't want to do this. <laughs> right. That, that would be a lot of work, and a lot of people, and very expensive. Hmm. I'm trying to find a picture yeah. of the evolution piece I have in, my, in our gallery on my computer. No, you, you have one. Um, maybe if we, you can, there was uh, the, installation uh, the install the installation images from the museum mm -hmm. because i i put this piece together there's one gray group with uh, seven objects i think if I we, um, ah yes yes we have uh, here it is yeah so same series different tone and color yes Beautiful. yes this one you can this see. is at the gallery i really like it because here also you can see the um you see the green line so i really was trying to you have the imagination the piece is a little bit turning around mm -hmm. okay let me get out of this and go back close current tab all right so michael are you there yes I'm, okay I'm good. still here yeah i'm still here all right so i think we're done with the catalog now we're there's more to see in the catalog, but we'll kind of kick out of the catalog back to the PDF here and just kind of breathe through the works that are in the show with the deep professional photos. If anybody has any questions, this would be a great time to ask because we're just kind of kind of breeze through these. To, they're about 37 pictures of the of the image of the of the work in the show uh, entirely, so you'll have a chance to see every single piece. And I do like the way you got you had them displayed in the gallery with the experience of the explosion of color because that draws people in to really see your work and how similar it is in, in color, but how different it is in color and design and style and scale, which is very important for people to see, depending on what their taste is and how you create. But every piece you make is, is so magical, Michael. It's really no. impressive. Great to have you here. No. Thank you very much. <clears throat> yeah, all your pieces you see are really like, uh, you have seen in the, um, in the installation and every piece you show right here. Now it's difficult to see the, the dimension mm -hmm. because one piece were like four feet, the other piece is one and a half feet and uh, yeah. Right, but you get to, I mean, I've seen enough of your work to kind of gauge it a little bit because I recognize your forms, but you know, the possibilities are endless. 
You know, you really have a, a great repertoire of styles and colors and tones. And the wall works you have are some, some of the most beautiful we've ever shown in the gallery too. And there's not, there's a few artists that make abstract wall work and it's getting more and more in demand with our clients because their homes are filling up or they're new to glass and they don't quite grasp full-blown sculpture. But yeah, like, like glass for the wall, like uh, some wall panels, it doesn't matter. It's not, it's, I think it's not so common. And it's mm -hmm. also, it's really different if you compare the solid casts that work with, uh, like I said, with the wall pieces, could be another artist. Right. But if you if you know the, the source of inspiration, you got the relation. Yeah. Um, well, your inspiration is obviously world travels, nature, your time scuba yeah. diving and tra world travel. Now and yeah. now family, right? Now family. Yeah, and now no, no family. I just was uh, asking uh, my wife because they're, they're, they're downstairs. Please try to keep our <laughs> daughter a little bit quiet because we have a very like big uh, open flat just a few doors and uh, because right now we have like uh, half past 7 uh, p.m. p.m. is a bright in the evening and the yeah. small one is going to bed soon yeah yeah my kids hit the pit hit the bed around 6 30 yeah. but they fight for an hour <laughs> wonderful collection Michael congratulations on your exhibition congratulations on the catalog and then congratulations on an impressive body of work. Um, I'll keep clicking through these so everybody can see kind of the detailed yeah. shots of every piece. But yeah. they are just beautiful. Yeah. Just amazing stuff, amazing work. And if there are, is there any kind of question, questions, oh, chat, now there would be the chance. Um... Everybody's enjoying the visuals, it seems like, Michael. <laughs> okay. That's, usually, that's what I usually do too when I come to Zooms. I just enjoy the visuals. Um, I had a funny question. It's like, what time of day do you do you like to create most? <laughs> Where are you most motivated? In the morning? Are you a morning guy? In the mo I'm um, uh, I'm a morning guy. Like uh, when I get the um, main ideas, I think when the idea is born, when I start sketching, mainly this is uh, before nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. No, so I get an idea, grab the pen, I make it, and then I make a sketch. And of course, afterwards, we have to shape the model. This will be over the day, but I think uh, the ideas grow, the idea grows in the morning. Gotcha. Or, or while I'm um, sometimes when I'm driving long distances, sitting in the car on the highway, on the motorway, time to think, uh, think about something. Yeah. How do you take notes when you're driving? <laughs> no, I'm just uh, I keep it in my head. Uh -huh. And sometimes I think the ideas have to grow over months mm -hmm. or yeah, you, you keep it in your head and then uh, I sketch it. Yeah. Aha. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, uh, this is one of the wall panels uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's from the, uh, from Pacific Islands, some small islands. I don't know where it's Morea or Palau. It was, I have to, I have some uh, notes. Records, there's so some notes where I exactly know this is the, um, for instance, this is the Nasser, the Nasser Lake in South Egypt. You really can see the lake is affecting the mountains. It's mm -hmm. like an, uh, like a root. Is that the right word? Like a root from a like tree. A root. Yeah. But the, 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 the silver color, the darker silver is the water, and you see the mountains are more like reddish, mm -hmm. reddish one. These photos are definitely better when you get them blown up. Yeah. Close as we can get. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's very good to see. I don't know. The, the PDF was a little bit um, yeah, like sandy, how I said. Mm -hmm. It's really good to see here. You see kind of the small bulbs and the silver, the silver on the back. Yeah, right. See through so the please talk about the lighting of the wall pieces. So actually, because... It's optical glass. The wall pieces are just, I think they're about a half, thin, it's a half inch or three quarters of an inch thick. Um, I think you just need very few lighting or nothing because of the silver on the back. Mm -hmm. Depending on the piece, if you light it too much, you get a really strong color effect. So some of the pieces, you even don't need no light at all. 
because they are so strong with color because of the silvering of the mirror, they're keeping the light and we got a very strong reflection. Now we're into the Phoenix. Uh, this is the goal. This is the work inspired by the fire, but grew out of an idea. Yeah. So um, it's a Phoenix piece uh, I use, like this is covered with uh, 24K gold. Um, and this is uh, this is like this color is called moon gold. So I try to get to create another color. If you go one step back with the other Phoenix piece, this is more yeah more golden brown, and the other one has a little bit uh, different color. Uh, I, I see it now. I didn't see it in person. Yeah, I, no. When I'm talking about it, I, <laughs> I try to to choose really two different gold colors, which are as much as possible apart. Mm. You really see it when uh, the pieces are, or well, images of pieces are uh, next to each other. other. Right. Yeah. And then we're into the newest body of work. Yeah. The cover of the catalog. All right. Well, that wraps up the images. Let me close and shop sharing my screen. Well, that's great, Michael. It's 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 great. This, it's, this museum show came together as planned. I know you put your heart and soul into it. I know you're going to have lots of pedestals around your studio now too. <laughs> to have. No, the um, 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 actually the the, the pedestals are uh, owned by the museum. Oh, they are. Okay, uh, good. No, I'm, I make the suggestion about the installation, and the museum really likes the idea to get the trans. Yeah, tra the pedestals are not transparent because we have this uh, framing like mm -hmm. uh, steel and wood. But normally, like if we have a group of forty or fifty objects. We have the pedestals are filling up the room, mm -hmm. and now they have uh, mainly like, uh, we like call, we I call think it, I guess 95 percent light are coming through the pedestals. Yeah, so we'll be amazed uh, about the installation. Yeah, it's a, an airy feeling. You have yeah. lots of room without having all that blockage going on, which is great. Well, thank you, for Michael, for joining us today and sharing with us your story about the, the installation, installation and all the bodies of work. Congratulations on your retrospective. And we're looking forward to showing you at our next upcoming show. Um, we have work in the gallery by the artist. You're welcome to see any time. The exhibition is for, a lot of the work in the exhibition is for sale too with pricing. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact me anytime. Thank you all for joining me today and enjoy your weekend. Thank you again, all. Take care. Thank you very bye -bye. much for having me, Aaron. Thank you, Michael. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.